Hi, my name is Seth Castile with Underwater Dogs. I've volunteered at animal shelters all over the country, and there are millions of pets looking for forever homes, and they need our help. One of the best ways we can help them is to take a better adoption picture. One picture saves a life. Imagine you're a dog or a cat. You're brought here in the middle of the night, you're gonna be confused and you're gonna be scared. It's not an ideal time to have your picture taken, but unfortunately for these dogs and cats, it is the time their picture is taken. And that picture is in use to help them find a forever home, which is really tough. So we're here to come in and create some uplifting, hopeful portraits of dogs and cats to help them find forever loving homes. We're gonna come in, spend some time, have fun with them, and through the course of that, take much better photos. In this video, we're gonna talk about cameras. I'm going to teach you some tips and tricks about point and shoot cameras, as well as how to use my preferred setup, a digital SLR camera with 50 millimeter lens. So if you're using a point and shoot camera, let me point out a couple of tips. Number one, don't use any flash. When you use flash, you're gonna draw out really strange colors in the cat's eyes, blue, green, yellow, orange, whatever. So turn your flash off. Number two, Put your point and shoot camera in sports mode. If your camera has a sports mode, put it in sports mode. That's gonna allow you to have the fastest shutter speed possible so the cat is not a blur. Number three, if your point and shoot camera has burst mode, basically it allows you to press the button and take several pictures in a row, the chances of you getting a special moment are gonna go way up. So put your camera in burst mode. So no flash, get your shutter speed up by action mode, sports mode, and burst mode. Now, every point and shoot camera is a little bit different. So I recommend these things, but experiment, you know, get your camera out, try different modes, get into your situation and practice. Talking about working with digital SLR cameras and why they're so great for shelter pet photography. So here we are in a parking lot. It doesn't look like it's a great place for photos. We have a garbage can, we have a big concrete pillar, uh, we have all kinds of weird signs, notice. We have a lady in a weird, mysterious 70s vintage coat over here. Um, I don't even know who she is. And then we have our friend Ozai, who is our, our dog we're helping today. Uh, as you can see, it's maybe not a great place to take a photo. However, if you have this setup, which is this Canon camera and 50 millimeter lens, what we can do is we can have Ozai come over here and sit down. Ozai, look! So if we have him sit down over here, we have a beautiful little backdrop um, that's natural, that's leaves. We have the sun behind here, and we can create a very beautiful fairy tale portrait, which is gonna help Ozai get out of here. I love this picture because it's so inviting. If you're online and you see this picture, number one, there's no negative elements. We don't see any concrete, we don't see any bars. We see a nice, natural, green setting. It looks like he's in maybe a beautiful park. Uh, and then Ozai here, the focus is on Ozai. There's no weird distracting elements. You know, It's just really about Ozai. He's very positive, he's looking straight at us, he's smiling, he's saying, hey, come adopt me. You'd have no idea that this garbage can and this concrete pillar were there based on the photo. Let's talk about working with digital SLR cameras. You can get some pretty good shots with point and shoot cameras as well as phones, but I'll tell you what, a DSLR camera with 50 millimeter lens is the perfect setup to take photos that save lives. And it's not much more expensive than most point and shoot cameras. You can actually afford it. I'm gonna show you how to use this to take fantastic pictures. Step number one, attach your 50 millimeter lens to your digital SLR camera. Wait till you hear a click. Turn it on. Step number three, turn your camera mode to AV, which stands for Aperture Priority. Step four, using this dial here, turn down your aperture to the lowest possible number. Remember, the lower the number goes, the faster your shutter speed, which means sharp pictures. And the lower the number, the blurrier the background. Now let's work on your focus. We wanna make sure that we have sharp pictures. Here's this little automatic focus button here. If we click this button, we have one shot, AI focus, and AI servo. I always recommend putting the mode as AI servo. If the cat moves a little bit, 
the cat will still be in focus. Also for your lens, make sure it's an automatic focus mode. There's manual and there's automatic. Now we need to set our focus point. This will help us get sharp in focus eyes and a blurry background. So we're gonna click this button right here, which is our focus point button. We click that and here we have AF point selection. As you can see, we can select this point, that point, the bottom point, the left point, all points. We actually wanna choose the center point and the center point only. So you can see I got the single point automatic focus mode. And what I'm trying to do is just put this, put this point right on the cat's face. There you go, that works. So if you follow these basic steps, you can take absolutely beautiful photos to save lives. There's obviously a lot more you can do with this camera here, but if you keep to those bare essentials, you got a winning plan. I've got a partner here, Allison, who's gonna help me with these cats. And also she's here for safety. You know, we wanna be respectful of these cats. We don't want them jumping out and running away. She can help me keep the cat here in the cage as I take this picture. The reason why you team up with someone, it just helps make your job as a photographer much, much easier. For example, Allison here is responsible for handling Stella, keeping her on a lead, kind of keeping her calm and making sure she's not jumping around, running off across the park or et cetera. So it's a safety thing. She wants to keep Stella safe and allows me just to focus on taking the picture. It's always really important to be safe with shelter dogs. Some of these dogs come from circumstances we don't know about, we don't understand. Um, most of these dogs obviously are wonderful. You know, they're great pets, but they may not know who you are. So, you know, remember that. Don't just jump down in their face and surprise them with a hug because they may not understand what you're doing. So, you know, when you first meet the dog, this is common sense really, but you know, be confident and, you know, present your hand and don't put your face in the dog's face. Always be very safe about it. Safety is the number one thing with doing this. So here we are meeting Cato, who's a, uh, a pit bull terrier friend. Uh, he obviously is a real sweetheart. Um, you can just tell that he's friendly, but I don't know him yet. So when I'm meeting Kato, I'm just gonna be very respectful. Hey Kato! I'm not gonna put my face down next to his face. I'm just gonna say hello. Kato, do you want a treat? <gasps> can you sit for it? He's a little distracted, but I'm just making sure I'm, I'm respectful of him, giving him a chance to kind of get to know me a little bit before getting down on the ground. It's also important that Allison here, my handler, has a really good grip on Kato. You know, make sure that she has the lead because I'm gonna put myself down on the ground and be fairly close to Kato. So I wanna make sure everybody's safe here. When choosing a good location, it's important to find a place that has no distracting elements. It's also important to find a place in the shade. So we're gonna walk around, and we're gonna look for a really good spot. As we can see here, we've got bright sun out. It's a, it's a little hard to see. Um, I always recommend shooting in the shade. We also have lots of really distracting elements. Even though we have elements of nature, we have really weird trees, cacti. Here's a really strange fountain. You know, the important thing is we wanna make sure the focus is on the dog. And, and not on a fountain, you know, we don't need a fountain in there. Try to find a location that doesn't have a lot of distractions in the background. After all, you want the focus to be on the dog. We're gonna go searching through the, the jungle for a great spot. Here we go, we found our spot. I always recommend shooting in the shade. Now I'm in the sun, now I'm in the shade. The reason I do this is if you're in the sun, it's really, really bright for the dogs to see. Sometimes they're squinting. It also blows out a lot of important highlights, photographing black dogs and white dogs in the sun. You often lose a lot of these important details. So, we put them back here in the shade. This way, they have nice, even lighting. It's just much more flattering. For a backdrop, this is a perfect backdrop. We're gonna put the dogs just right here, use this as a backdrop. The pictures are gonna look amazing. I try to incorporate elements of nature into photos. Sometimes you can't have them because they're not there. But if you can find them, use them. Here we are at the animal shelter. We're gonna go photograph some dogs. We're looking for the best place to do that. Let's go.
So looking around here, this is no good. We have more bars, more cages, more metal, more concrete. Uh, we have tough lighting, we have, you know, shadow, we have sun, it's all over the place. So here's another option. It's a meet and greet area. Come on in. We don't have a lot of space in here, but what we do have is some shade, which is great. So I can position a dog right here, and then I can kind of photograph a little bit down here so I have a nice, clean, green background, which is nice and colorful. Uh, the lighting is great. I recommend it. This wall is perfect for photos. So we're not in the sun, which means we don't have any harsh light. Um, we have a nice colorful backdrop, which is not distracting. Um, and you know, it's as quiet as it is gonna be anywhere near this area. So I think this is an ideal place to take photos. Now here's all the cats. We've got about 40 cats in this room. They're all in their kennels here. I'm looking for the best place to take their photograph. Um, so we've got this, we've got a lot of natural light in here. We've got this room, which is a meet and greet room. There's not a lot of great opportunities here for photographs. As you can see, it's, there's a weird desk here. There's strange lighting, this fluorescent lighting. Um, there's no great cat furniture. If there's awesome cat furniture in here, I'd say maybe we give it a shot. But I think if you put a cat in here, chances are they may try to run around. You spend most of your time actually chasing the cat rather than taking a picture. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to photograph the cats in the kennels themselves. And we're going to do it so you don't even really know where they are. Uh, you just have great headshots. You wouldn't even have any idea they're in these kennels. So if you're taking pictures of cats that are in a foster home or a foster apartment, uh, you have many options to take pictures of cats in terms of the location. I try to use some natural light if I can, and I'm gonna try to use some of this furniture and non-distracting elements and do a nice headshot of Henry the black cat. So when you're working with a black cat, I wouldn't recommend them putting them on a black couch or in front of a black wall. We wanna make sure they stand out. We have a nice gray couch here, so Henry's gonna stand out from the couch. Uh, we have nice light in this room, so we're going to see what he looks like. Good. There we go. We got a nice headshot of Henry. I always recommend, if you can, lure your cat model over towards a window. You're going to get much better ambient light. Their face is going to look much more beautiful. You're going to see all those great details. Their eyes are going to look terrific. <laughs> To recap, always use a helper and make sure you know and follow shelter protocol. Remember to be safe. Safety is priority. Be careful and be respectful when approaching new pets for the first time. You might want to go down and give this dog or cat a hug, but remember, they don't know you yet. So take your time, be patient, and be safe. Always shoot in the shade. Limit distracting elements and use elements of nature if they're available. Team up, invite your friends, and develop a system to photograph as many pets as possible. Remember. One picture saves a life. In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to photograph dogs to help them find forever loving homes. When photographing dogs, I always recommend teaming up with a partner. This is my friend Allison, and this is our model, Stella. The reason why you team up with someone, it just helps make your job as a photographer much, much easier. For example, Allison here is responsible for handling Stella, keeping her on a lead, kind of keeping her calm, and making sure she's not jumping around, running off across the park or et cetera. So it's a safety thing. She wants to keep Stella safe and allows me just to focus on taking the picture. So this is a, a 50 millimeter lens by Canon. And the reason I use this lens, it's very fast. It creates this very amazing uh, fairy tale effect of the dog's face. So imagine just a picture of the dog's face. Their eyes are in focus and everything in the background is kind of blurred out. It looks like a fairy tale. It's very appealing and it looks like a very uh, positive situation. Um, so again, when working with animal shelters and, and rescues, you know, some people would think that it's, it could be a potentially negative thing and it's really not. Um, so we always want to make sure that we, we make the pictures as positive as we possibly can and one of the ways by, to do that is to make these dreamy pictures with this particular lens here. Obviously it's important also 
to see what Stella looks like. You know, maybe is Stella small? Is she big? You know, does she have interesting markings? Does she have all four legs? You know, sometimes you just don't know. So certainly I recommend uh, taking some additional pictures that you can use online too. Here's Dee Dee. She's a little chihuahua also. Hi Dee Dee. You ready? Come over here Dee Dee. I think Dee Dee might be a lap dog. When working with dogs, it's important to really limit your number of distractions. For example, having all these people around, they're all distractions. Little Dee Dee here is interested in saying hello to you, to you, to you, even to the camera. So Dee Dee's kind of distracted, so we're gonna ask these friends to uh, take a hike for a minute. They can come back later. Now, with fewer people around, it's more likely Dee Dee is gonna be responding to me. We'll get a better picture that way. I'm always trying to engage with Dee Dee, so I'm either using some food, a treat, you know, that Dee Dee's allowed to have, or a, uh, a squeaker toy or some kind of noise, or I can make some kind of a visual sign. So I always want Dee Dee to try to look directly into the camera lens. So for example, hey Dee Dee, look. Dee Dee, look at this. So I'll see if I can engage with Dee Dee like this. Dee Dee's interested in the treat. And then I'll kind of pull the treat away and then I'll put the squeaker right above my camera lens, see if Dee Dee will look right at me. <laughs> Boom, there's a picture. Good job Dee Dee. Okay, you can have a treat now. Good job. You can also make a lot of weird noises, if that's your thing, to try to entice the dogs to engage with you. <laughs> so I have this little squeaker toy, you know, it's a little inside of a squeaker toy and you just squeak it. I always recommend don't squeak it when you first meet the dog. Wait until you have the perfect opportunity. The dog is in place, the dog is being patient, and then you squeak it and you might have that reaction. You might get a little head tilt or something like this. Definitely try it out. Sometimes you can bark like a dog, either a high-pitched or a low-pitched kind of bark and see how they respond to that. And if you give the dog a little bit of a treat, as they're eating the treat, they're gonna move their mouth a little bit and you might get some really interesting expressions that way. You ready, Stella? As you can see, I just took about 100 pictures, so I always joke, if you take enough pictures, at least one of them will turn out. This is Chubbs, our special needs chihuahua friend. He's helping us out today. Remember when photographing dogs, you always wanna be on their level. You don't want them looking up at you, you want them looking at you. So with Chubbs, for example, he's a tiny dog. So unless you're three inches tall, you're gonna to need to be on his level. So you're probably gonna to need to be laying in the dirt on the ground, crawling through the mud. If crawling through the mud is not your thing, then I would recommend using a table, like this picnic table here. All we can do is sit down, we put Chubbs up here on the table, uh, make sure you're still working with a partner to make sure Chubbs doesn't go diving off the table. But I can put Chubbs right here on this table. I am, I'm right at his eye line. I can take a picture of Chubbs and help him get out of here. So here we are meeting Cato, who's a, uh, a pit bull terrier friend. Ooh, Kato. So. We're getting some good pictures of Kato. He's super friendly, he's giving kisses, um, but he can look a little bit tough. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna walk him around for a couple of minutes, you know, get him moving around, and that way he'll start panting a little bit, and panting can look like smiling. Thank you, Allison. Good, good, good. Excellent. So we had a dog that's super friendly, but looks kind of tough. Ran him around for a second, and now we got a nice smiling shot. So when you're working with all white dogs or all black dogs, you have to be very careful about the background. Uh, and this is a lot of times why I use a nice green background if I can, because I don't know too many green dogs. So it works out pretty good. Um, but if I was working with Stella in a different place, I would want to try to avoid putting her up against a white wall, for example. I'd like to show some kind of a contrast between Stella and the background. So she really stands out. I mean, the focus is about the dog. And if I was working with um, a black dog, I would want to be very careful about putting them against a, like a black wall. You can see in these examples that putting a black or white dog in the wrong setting can really hide what the dog looks like. By pulling the dog out of the shadows and into a bright setting with natural light, 
you can get some fantastic shots. To recap, the most important photo is the headshot, and especially the eyes, because the eyes are what makes a connection with potential adopters. Don't be afraid to get down low. Get on eye level with the dog and engage with toys, treats, and squeakers. Limit your distractions. Dogs are distracted by everything. You want to make sure your subject is focused on you. If you're working with a dog that looks kind of tough, try running him around in circles for a couple minutes. That way the dog will start panting and panting looks like smiling. My favorite backdrop is a green bush. If you put your dog in front of that green bush, you're going to have a nice natural green setting in the background with no distracting elements. It's the perfect photo. And finally, remember to be patient. Getting frustrated will never help. Sometimes you'll get your winning shot in a few seconds. Sometimes it may take you 20 minutes or longer. This experience should be positive for the pet and positive for you. Have fun and you're gonna get some great shots that will save lives. Today we're going to teach you how to photograph shelter cats to help increase adoption rates. We're here in the cat room at a Los Angeles animal shelter. The mission, photograph some cats to increase adoption rates. As you can see here, we have cages and bars and concrete, not very appealing for photographs. So what we want to try to do is smoke and mirrors, hide these elements and just focus on the cats, their faces, their expressions, eliminate the negativity and just create positive uplifting photographs that can save lives. I've got a partner here, Allison, who's going to help me with these cats and also she's here for safety. You know, we want to be respectful of these cats. We don't want them jumping out and running away. She can help me keep the cat here in the cage as I take this picture. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up the cage like this. I'm going to put on this special 50 millimeter lens, which I highly recommend. And I'm going to take a wonderful headshot of this cat showing some moment of emotion, some expression that's going to connect with the potential adopters. The beauty of this lens is there's not a lot of light in here. I can get fast shutter speeds. My pictures are going to be in focus, which is super important. Also, because of this lens, I can blur out the background so the cat's eyes can be in super sharp focus and everything else will be blurred out. So you have no idea the cat's in here. The cat could be in a mansion hanging out in the Bahamas somewhere, just, just living the dream. So we're going to highlight just the head of the cat, just the face of the cat, so we can show some unique expression, some moment of emotion with this cat in hopes to connect with potential adopters so they'll come in and want to say hi. See, no bars, no cage, just this beautiful cat's face. Patience really comes into play when working with cats. You know, some of these cats would love to be photographed. Some of these cats may not be in the mood to be photographed. So we just want to be respectful of that. Uh, we're going to see if this cat's interested in maybe some keys or a treat or a cat toy and see if we can lure this cat out. Uh, into our photo shoot zone and take a better picture. So this cat right here is not interested right now, but obviously this cat is having a blast and wants to hang out with us. So we're going to do some better shots of this cat. Come on out a little bit more. Yeah, what you want to try to do is actually get the cat to the front of the cage. That way it's easier to blur out the background. If the cat's standing right next to the background, we're going to probably see the background. So if we, if we lure the cat out a little bit further, um, It'll actually help us produce better photos. I think we got a good picture. So right now this cat's sort of in the back of the cage. I'm trying to lure this cat to come out a little bit more forwards so we have better lighting. Perfect. Head tilt. So we just used some keys. Uh, the cat wasn't ready for the keys. And that was great because it was unpredictable. And because we introduced this element, the cat responded and just a little head tilt looked up. Great picture. So when you're working with a black cat, I wouldn't recommend them putting them on a black couch or in front of a black wall. We want to make sure they stand out. We have a nice gray couch here, so Henry's going to stand out from the couch. Uh, we have nice light in this room, so we're going to see what he looks like. A lot of people complain that their photos of black cats are out of focus. And it's not necessarily because the cats are too fast, it's because your shutter speed is too slow. So if you're working with a point and shoot camera, Put the camera in sports mode. That'll usually crank up your ISO and you get faster shutter speeds. That way Henry's in focus. If you're using one of these fancy cameras and this lens I recommend, this 50 millimeter lens, you use the biggest aperture you can and that way you get really fast shutter speeds. If you have a fast shutter speed, Henry here is gonna be in sharp focus and his picture's gonna look really good. So 
use only natural light, turn your flash off, make sure your shutter speeds are fast, and you get good pictures. Good. There we go, we got a nice headshot of Henry. Look, look buddy. And we have a couple of cats in here now. So oftentimes, you'll find two cats that can be adopted out together. So if I've got them both living in the same foster home, and I can lure them over, I can get a picture of both of them in the same shot. That'd be fantastic. To recap, when working with cats and kennels, always use a partner for safety. Focus on a headshot and don't shoot the negative elements like bars and concrete or metal. Don't use flash, use only natural light and a fast shutter speed. Engage with cats using toys, keys, and treats. Most importantly, have patience when working with cats. You gotta be prepared to spend time to get the shot that you want. If you need to move on to another cat and then come back, that's totally fine. Have fun. Remember, you're saving lives.